Hey everyone, my name is Nick, and in this episode of this Linux proficiency tutorial, I want to talk about some real-world errors that you might uh, encounter in Linux, and that specifically deals with uh, linker problems. So not everyone is familiar with linker problems, and if you're just getting started, you know, you may not run into too many of these, but it turns out you can find these in some, you know, rather unlikely places. So what do we mean when we're talking about a linker? So, you know, when we're writing some code, uh, there's a lot of time libraries that we want to use, uh, so we don't have to, you know, completely implement our own version of something. So say you want to do something that uh, has multiple threads in Linux, a lot of times you'll use pthreads, so you'll link against the pthread library. That way you don't have to recompile, uh, you know, an entire library worth of uh, tools every single time you want to use them. There's just a shared library that's out there that you can link against and use those functions. So uh, that's what we mean by linking. So let's look at an example of a linker problem within Linux. So uh, I found this the other day, um, and it was with the TeamSpeak client uh, for Linux. So I went ahead and downloaded the run file that you can get from their site, and it gives you this directory. And uh, inside this directory, you can see there's a lot of shared libraries. That's what these .so files are. And then there's also uh, an executable, and that's this uh, ts3 client uh, underscore linux underscore amd.64. So if you just run this client directly, so we get this error, and it's a linker error. So it says that error while loading shared libraries, this lib qua zip.so, cannot open shared object file, no such file or directory. So this just says that the linker couldn't find the shared library. All right. So Clearly, there's some problem going on here because, hey, here's this libquasip.so, so what gives? Why can't we find this? So, so there's a tool we can use to see um, what the executable knows the location of, and that's this LDD function. So we go to the manual for it with man LDD. What does this do? It just prints the shared object uh, dependencies for an executable. And so it'll list like this. So it'll tell you what the dependency is, and then it'll tell you where it is in memory, or um, in this case, uh, for a lot of these, it'll tell you the directory and uh, the location and memory. So for a lot of uh, a lot of the libraries that you'll link against, they're in this pre this preset path that the linker will automatically look in, which is in this lib64 directory. So this just contains a lot of you know standard libraries, things like libc, um, etc. So let's see what's going on here, right? So what happens when we do LDD on this TeamSpeak client? Right, so TeamSpeak Linux, AMD64. So we see something different there. So we see some not founds. So that means that the linker just doesn't know where these things are. So how do we tell it uh, where these things are? How do we, you know, we've already compiled it uh, or somebody else has compiled it. We just have an executable. So how do we tell it where to find these libraries that are right here in the same directory, right? So here's, all these ones that it can't find, it turns out they're all in this directory. So this brings us to a discussion on path variables. So whenever you have, uh, you're in a terminal, you have some inherent path variables. So one of them that's important is uh, PWD. Now that sounds familiar because it's also a function. And PWD just gives you your working directory. So if we run the PWD command, uh, PWD, uh, just prints out whatever is in that uh, that populate working directory that PWD variable right here. Uh, so then there's another important one, which is this. Uh, so we'll do echo, which just prints to the screen, and we'll do echo and then uh, path. So this gives us a whole bunch of different paths, and it's paths usually to executables. So in this case, uh, if we do um, ls slash bin and we see all of these executables in this bin directory so bin is short for binary and it's all these common functions that we use all the time so ls that we use to you know list out you know everything in a directory uh, cp that we use to uh, copy files tar that we use to compress files etc you know they can all be found in these directories and you know the way that we can run ls is that it looks in that path variable it sees if it can find ls within any of those directories that are listed within that path variable. And if it finds it, it just calls it. 
right? So if we do um, which ls, it tells us exactly where it looked for that executable, if it can find it. So, and then the final one, which deals with the linker, uh, not the final path, for, not the final variable that you'll have in an environment, but the, the final one we'll talk about is one called ld library path, right? So ld library path. And it turns out it's empty for us. Now, uh, the linker is going to check some standard uh, library places like lib64. Uh, and then it'll also look in whatever's in this uh, ld library path variable. So all we need to do in order to solve this bug where it can't find the shared libraries that are in the same directory is we just need to add this directory to the ld library path. And we can do that pretty simply. So we can do export, which just says I want to set a new uh, environment variable. I want that vi environment variable to be ld library path and then I want to set it equal to something and in this case I wanted to set it equal to whatever's in the current working directory so I can use another environment variable here in this case pwd and then let's say you know my ld library path may not be empty so if I just called this as it was it would overwrite ld library path but maybe I don't want to do that so if I want to save it and just append something new I can do a colon and then the environment variable ld library path. So let's see what happens when we echo ld library path now. So now we have a new uh, path that it's going to search when it's doing that linking or when it's looking for things that this execute was linked against. So we can call ld library path or ldd again on this TeamSpeak client. And now all of our linking problems are no more. So it can find this uh, libqua.zip, and it's because it can find it within this directory that we added to this uh, LD library path. And this is a very common thing uh, that happens in a lot of applications. You'll get an error saying that it can't find some library. And a lot of times it's just because it doesn't know, uh, the linker doesn't know where to look for it. So you just have to simply add these things to you know, that environment variable. Okay, so let's just prove that it works. So we'll actually run the client now, right? So TeamSpeak client linux.amd64, and hey, there it is. It actually pops up now. So we solved the problem. All right, so that's going to do it. And if we don't want to say have to you know go to a directory, export ld library path, and we just want it to automatically happen every time we open the terminal, well, we can do that too. So if we go to um, our home directory and then we open up uh, .bashrc. This is run every single time that we open up a, uh, uh, every time we open up this bash terminal. And so it runs a couple things, it, you know, it does things like set, you know, what, what the interface looks like, but we can also append our own things here. So I have a custom, uh, the way that my terminal looks is custom, and so I do that uh, using this PS1 variable, so that changes what this CBA colon looks like if I disable that. So let's open that back up and say we comment this out and save it. If I open up a new terminal, it's going to look different, right? Because it's using the default, right? It still works just the same as a terminal, but this time it, uh, it changes what it looks like. So instead of getting this orange and purple, I have this green look and it actually appends the directory when I change directory. So we can do things like that. And then we can also export things to path, and we can also export things, uh, say th things like uh, LD library uh, path. So if I wanted to, I could set it equal to, uh, so I could do export LD library uh, path is equal to, and then I could do, so tilde, it just stands for you know your home directory, and then I could go into downloads, and then I could go into whatever the team's speak client is and then dot 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 whatever the rest of the path is I want to add and then I could uh, go ahead and save what it was ever in LD library path so you see that uh, environment variables uh, or anything that's an environment variable you know that we put this dollar sign before it'll light up a special color so that's gonna do it for this episode as always if you want to you can check out uh, the rest of my content or the rest of my uh, 
the code that I post online at github.com slash coffee before arch. So over here we've got C++ stuff, uh, GPU programming stuff in CUDA, some multi-programming stuff, some assembly programming stuff. You know, all the uh, code is available for each of these series uh, as well as links to the YouTube video. So go ahead and check it out. Leave me some you know, comments in, in case you have a specific topic in Linux as far as Linux proficiency that you'd like to have covered and I'd be more than happy to do it. But other than that, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.